delegates of governments and international agencies, as well as corporate heavyweights, relevant experts and leading scholars are gathering in Davos this week for the World Economic Forum, which opens under the theme of rebuilding trust. So what is on the forum's agenda this year? Which issues are likely to unite the forum and which are likely to divide? And is the World Economic Forum still relevant? Hope your work week is off to a good start. It's Monday afternoon here in Korea and you're watching Issues and Insiders. I'm Min Sun Hee. The World Economic Forum opens its 54th edition in the Swiss ski resort of Davos this week and organizers say the annual gathering this year comes against the backdrop of the most challenging geopolitical scenario to date. For more on this, I have Lee ju the head of Asia Pacific at the World Economic Forum, live on the line. Mr. Lee, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Good to be with you. Thank you. I also have Konsua here in the studio with me. So welcome. Good afternoon, Sunny. Right. So let's begin with some general information about the World Economic Forum. Sure. The World Economic Forum, or informally known as the Davos Forum, is an annual non-profit event held in the heart of the Alps, a small town in Switzerland called Davos. It usually takes place in January, which is the best time for skiing. But it's not the slopes, but indoor venues like the Davos Congress Center, where world leaders, namely heads of state, senior government officials, business leaders or heads of civil society groups get together to talk about pressing matters. Davos is an invitation only event and uh, media is present as well, of course, uh, and uh, I had the honors to actually cover the event back in 2016. The World Economic Forum's official mission is improving the state of the world by engaging business, political, academic and other leaders of society to shape global, regional and industry agendas. Now, despite the name, it's not just about economy. Climate change, poverty, geopolitical tensions are addressed as well, uh, with a focus on public-private collaboration. Uh, agendas change each year to discuss the most critical global issues at hand that are addressed in lectures or panel discussions. Leaders also take the event as an opportunity to hold important behind closed doors meetings and lots of networking. The World Economic Forum was founded by Klaus Schwab, a German engineer, back in 1971. It actually started as the European Management Symposium, and then in 1987, it changed to the World Economic Forum. This year marks the 54th Davos Forum taking place, starting today the 15th until Friday the 19th, and uh, more than 2,800 participants are expected this year. Right. And before we delve into the agenda for this year, Mr. Lee, what have been some of the forum's major achievements, so to speak, over the past years, would you say? Thank you, Sonny. Um, from our standpoint, over the last 50 years, the forum has actually seen a lot of major milestones and, and a lot of them actually uh, here in Davos. Um, we have helped avert war between Greece and Turkey. Uh, the forum has been honored to also host the handshake that sealed the end of the apartheid in South Africa. Uh, it was also here in Davos that uh, saw the launch of Gavi, uh, the alliance uh, that helped vaccinate more than a billion children since its launch. But um, beyond these milestones, I think another very noteworthy uh, achievement from our perspective is the fact that uh, the forum's stakeholder capitalism uh, theory has really helped mainstream the idea that uh, businesses also should be working uh, to ensure that the society and all of the stakeholders um, have a better future uh, against a backdrop when the main idea was that uh, business, the business of business is actually business. And now I think a lot of corporate leaders also agree that uh, companies have a much larger role in society. And uh, we're very proud to be sort of part of that movement. Right. And that being said, so what can you share with us about this year's agenda of the World Economic Forum? 
Well, the World Economic Forum takes place uh, at a time of wars continuing in Gaza and Ukraine. And the latter one actually having been one of the major focuses at last year's uh, event. And both conflicts are to top discussions at this year's meeting. An economic slowdown, climate change and the AI revolution are expected to be high on the agenda as well. The official big theme of this year's forum is rebuilding trust with the aim to get down to the basic principles of trust, namely transparency, coherence and responsibility. And there are four key categories that the forum is divided into. The first one is achieving security and cooperation in a fractured world, which will evolve around global cooperation to identify, manage and prevent conflicts such as Russia's war in Ukraine and the Israel-Hamas crisis. The second one is creating growth and jobs for a new era. Speaks for itself. Uh, leaders will put their heads together to make space for new jobs and economic growth amid high levels of unemployment in many countries with the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic still lingering. Artificial intelligence as a driving force for the economy and society is another key theme with a focus on how AI technology can support supply chains, predict natural disasters and increase cooperation. Safe and efficient usage of AI for businesses and individuals will also be discussed. And the fourth one is a long term strategy for climate, nature and energy. Participants will seek long term sustainable ways to move toward carbon neutrality by 2050 while maintaining access to affordable, inclusive and safe resources such as water, food or energy. Right, of course. And Mr. Lee, again, then among the many issues to be addressed at the forum this year, which or what one particular issue do you see will do you see as topping the talks? So as mentioned earlier, I think uh, the meeting uh, is happening against a backdrop that is very complicated uh, geopolitically. We are primarily an economic forum, but then uh, economic prosperity cannot take place um, when there is geopolitical fractures and uncertainties. So um, as also was reported earlier, there was a gathering of national security advisors around the world. Um, and the meeting actually happens today or opens today rather but um, the national security advisors were focusing on the issue of Ukraine and how to really bridge between the current situation and, and peace talks. So uh, I think it will be on the minds of a lot of the global leaders who are gathering today. Um, you know, what will be the geopolitical um, uh, landscape, if you will, uh, as we head into 2024 with, you know, not only the, the, the invasion of Russia into Ukraine, but also the war that's happening in uh, Israel and uh, between Hamas. Um, I think there are many geopolitical hotspots that I think we should try and sort of find a, a solution towards in order to secure a common prosperity. Right, of course, and hopefully there will be some tangible progress on that front during the talks this week then. So despite its well-intended purpose, the forum itself, it's seen quite uh, its fair share of criticism as well. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Right, uh, Davos has been criticized uh, for being a meeting of the elite, uh, the most powerful, the most rich, uh, meaning the forum that aims to tackle global issues has a limited representation of uh, global perspectives, is what some say. Uh, there have been arguments that many issues that are being addressed are not dealt sufficiently by the people to whom it most concerns, such as those representing developing countries. Now, one simple example, uh, we have been seeing how climate change affects the poor more than the rich, uh, raising doubts over tangible solutions coming from the billionaires gathered in Davos talking about climate change. Uh, gender balance and ethnic diversity have been issues as well, which the forum has been trying to address over the years by increasing the proportion of female invitees, for instance. Protests against the forum are predicted to be staged, as has been the case in past years, uh, by activist groups that criticize the event's handling of environmental, social and economic issues. Uh, with a lack of solutions and actions at the center of critique, the relevance of the World uh, Economic Forum is 
itself is uh, often being questioned. Right, and that being said then, Mr. Lee, what do you suppose makes this particular forum relevant even amid the criticism it faces? So I'll start by saying that um, when we were preparing for the meeting, especially this year, the backdrop again uh, was very complicated. Many people predicted that given all of the different issues around the world and also the fractures that we're seeing between countries, it would be uh, extremely difficult to bring everyone together. However, I think the fact that um, despite all, a lot of these differences, there is still a need for cooperation. And um, uh, the fact that um, no country or no company or no organization alone can actually tackle these different uh, challenging issues that we face, I think uh, has really brought everyone together. So we are seeing one of the largest and also high level meetings that we've hosted in the last 50 years. And I think that also speaks to uh, the importance of dialogue. So, you know, the forum does get criticized sometimes for, um, you know, being a talk shop, mainly about talks and no action. But I think to dismiss talks um, would really be to dismiss the lifeblood of democracy. Uh, so dialogue is very important. We are, therefore, um, very dedicated to facilitating open and uh, honest dialogue amongst all the different stakeholders. The other reason why I think this year's uh, theme of rebuilding trust is, is very important is um, that recipes for building trust is not just on uh, understanding one another, but also seeing track record of progress uh, and collaboration between all of these stakeholders. So we also do emphasize that there needs to be concrete action. Um, and as the International Organization for Public-Private Cooperation, we feel it's extremely important um, for stakeholders to get together uh, and see concrete action of you know, what their agreements can actually bring about. So whether it's in the, the field of climate change or uh, in setting guardrails for artificial intelligence, uh, we do have initiatives that run throughout the year. And Davos in a way is a milestone where we take stock of what has happened uh, throughout all of these collaborations and also how we can advance them with the latest changes uh, that take place. Right. And speaking more specifically, Mr. Lee, which issues do you see as uh, perhaps garnering some progress during talks this year? And which issues do you suppose will remain contentious? I think um, it's very hard to predict the actual progress and, and the outcome uh, from the talks uh, this, this year. But if I were to choose, I, I think, you know, given the, uh, the common understanding that uh, there need to be uh, some guardrails, uh, some set of uniform criteria uh, that really help uh, leverage the power of artificial intelligence and new technologies, and also uh, safeguard against some of the potential uh, difficulties that arise with it, I think there'll be some progress on uh, really agreeing on you know what should be those common principles for uh, ai governance um, in terms of you know uh, advancements on on climate change there have been uh, some meaningful progress um, you know throughout the year also in in key milestones like the cop in in the uae uh, and building on that we will try and see how you know some of these uh, discussions so far can really uh, benefit both the global north as well as the global south on achieving an equitable and also inclusive energy transition. Um, but you know there are many different uh, perspectives uh, that come into play on these key topics. So we'll we'll have to see how that uh, pans out. Right, indeed, we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, as well, what have global leaderships who are attending this year's uh, event? said about hoping to achieve? Uh, as the wars in Gaza and uh, Ukraine are at the top of the agenda, the stakeholders of uh, these uh, conflicts are likely to uh, focus on achieving successful diplomatic talks. And that is key Middle East leaders, including Israeli President Isaac Herzog, Palestine's Minister of Economy, leaders of Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. Uh, and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will present his peace plan at 
the event, which aims to finalize principles for lasting and just peace in Ukraine. For the U.S., the two wars are also going to be dominant. Uh, the U.S. will be represented by Secretary of State Antony Blinken, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, and Special Presidential Envoy for Climate John Kerry. Argentina's new president, Javier Milei, for whom Davos will be the first major international event, will be very busy with some 60 requests for bilateral meetings. And perhaps the most prominent figures, French President Emmanuel Macron and China's second-in-command Li Chang, both are holding special addresses. China's foreign ministry said that Beijing is hoping to join other parties at the forum to, quote, strengthen communication and enhance mutual understanding and trust to push forward the economic recovery of the world. Macron, the only G7 leader at the event, will reportedly talk about France's role in the future of Europe. Now, South Korea, which will have Prime Minister Han Dok Su on site, is expected to share Korea's vision as a global pivotal nation and introduce its policy directions. Han will attend numerous public and private sessions on restoring trust in the global system, nuclear power, AI and cooperation in the Pacific uh, region. And uh, at the 2023 uh, forum, meanwhile, we had President Yoon seok yeol himself participate uh, at the event. Back then, we had a very important uh, mission being the receiving this report uh, support for the Busan Expo. So this year it's going to be, I guess, uh, a little bit more broad. Right. Mr. Lee, keeping in mind the forum's broad agenda, what do you believe are some of the key variables with regard to global economic stability this year and what perhaps could be done to better tackle this, uh, to address them, that is? So as, as I mentioned, I think uh, a lot of the economists, uh, a lot of the leaders of financial institutions, as well as corporations, you know, have geopolitical uncertainty high on their radar. Um, uh, but that said, at the same time, I mean, um, you know, focus on really uh, ensuring that there is a equitable and also sustainable energy transition is another key topic, um, as well as, you know, really integrating and harnessing the power of technology. So with a lot of these different uh, variables, I think, um, you know, in order to really make sure that the world economy actually progresses towards a positive direction, we need to ensure that there is a better collaboration uh, between countries, between the global north and global south, and also between regions. Uh, we are seeing, you know, um, uh, recoveries uh, take place from the COVID-19 pandemic. But um, it's still not uh, uh, complete in terms of uh, the supply chain resilience and also, you know, given the uh, competition and rivalries that we see from uh, superpowers. So um, with all that, I think um, really building bridges and, you know, reaching a common ground on how we can collaborate against these economic headwinds, I think, will be an important uh, element of securing growth and prosperity. Mr. Lee, this is an impromptu question, but according to some media outlets, pundits that at the forum this year believe that the emergence of disease X may hinder economic growth in the near future. What are your thoughts regarding this belief? Well, I think it's something even before the COVID-19 pandemic that a lot of experts actually did warn. And I remember back in 2020 when we hosted our 50th annual meeting, um, we, we actually had discussions uh, even before the reports of, um, you know, the virus uh, outbreak in Wuhan. Um, uh, we had hosted discussions on how to really uh, be able to prepare uh, for these new emergences of diseases. Um, I think here, again, the only uh, way in which we can prevent is really to ensure that there is better collaboration, better surveillance, and also um, all of the different stakeholders as well as different countries um, have this coordinating mechanism um, to to be able to prepare better and also to uh, in a way um, detect better uh, these emergencies right and talking about individual efforts mr lee korea hopes to advance its role as a global pivotal state this year that being said what are your words of advice 
So indeed, the role of um, middle powers like Korea, I think, are definitely very important, especially as we see intensifying competition between um, global superpowers. Um, Korea, I think, as the only country in the world that has emerged from being a uh, recipient of aid to donor, I think can uh, play a, an important role in bridging between the global north and global south. I think um, uh, there are uh, many advantages, if you will, that Korea has in terms of its soft power, uh, the goodwill that it harnesses. Um, so definitely we hope to see more of an active role from Korea in different uh, topics uh, on global stages. And uh, as, as you mentioned, of course, um, for a lot of the Koreans, it was a disappointment to, to see that uh, uh, the result of the bid for the, the expo in 2030. But I think the message uh, that Korea carried in terms of uh, really trying to uh, provide and support uh, the developing nations with, you know, its development experience, as well as with different uh, sets of uh, advantages. I think that will still resonate. And, um, you know, we look forward to uh, a much more important leadership role for Korea going forward. Right, indeed we do. All right, Mr. Lee, over there at the World Economic Forum in Davos, thank you so much for making time to join us live at this very early hour at your end. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Right. And so here in the studio, thank you very much for your time and your thoughts. Thank you, Sunny. Right. Well, that is all the time we have for this edition of Issues and Insiders. Thank you for watching. See you same time tomorrow.